Yeah, so I'm making a short little video um, comparing the first three mechanical calculators on the market, uh, which are basically a thermometer, first came on the market in um, around 1851, and the Comptometer came on the market in 1887, and then the Brunsviga, or I should say the Odner first, but this is a Brunsviga example, came on the mar market in 1891. Um, these machines do not represent the very first original version of these mechanisms, but they are representative of the the first three um, calculator types that were mass produced and sold. That's something you could actually go out and buy. Um, so the air thermometer, of course, is based on the uh, Leibniz field principle. Um, as you can see, most of the construction in this machine is brass with a few steel parts. Um, the input, of course, it has sliders, so you would slide these up. You know, to whatever number you want to enter, say one, two, three, and turn the handle. So I'm not going to hit that. And that, of course, adds the number into the accumulator register at the top and increments the counter register. Um, as far as clearing, you simply lift up the register. Rotate each of the handles. And drop the register back down. Um, for subtraction, you have this switch. You can switch from addition to subtraction and you turn the crank in the same direction. Um, of course, the case is a wooden case. It has this little trap door here for important documents. And there's supposed to be a glass window here that uses a scratch pad. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the glass off it get some made for that, but um, for multiplication, you can, or division, you can shift the register over. So basically that allows you to enter the number, say 10 times now, instead of turning the handle 10 times from the first position. Um, and you can turn it over, you know, multiple different places um, to make addition and, multi uh, I should say multiplication and division. Um, easier and faster than just working, you know, from the the ones column. Um, contrast that with the comptometer. Of course, instead of the sliders, the comptometer has um, buttons, keys for input. Um, it has no action cranks, so as soon as you push the key, something happens in the register. So you can see I pushed the one, the two, and three key, and I've already got one, two, three right there. Um, so it's um, faster for direct adding, like if you just have a long list of numbers you want to add up, you can just punch them in one one after another. Which is on the arithmometer, you'd have to set the sliders, then turn the crank, then set the sliders to the next number, then turn the crank again. Um, so for direct addition, when you're just adding a long list of numbers, the comptometer is much faster to use. Um, for subtraction, however, you have to use complements, so that slows you down a little bit. That's what these small reddish digits are for or the complements and not nine or tens complements. Um, and that's how you do subtraction in conjunction with these Cali inhibits. So if I want to subtract, say, one from this last column, um, I can push the, on the small keys, I enter the number, I want to subtract less one. So I'm going to push the small zero. At the same time, I hold the Cali inhibit. And I now subtracted one from that first column. So a bit more of a complicated process than just throwing the switch on the air thermometer, but it can be done. Uh, multiplication and division are much more time consuming on the comptometer than the, on the air thermometer. Because on the air thermometer, you can just set the, your multiplier on the, the sliders and then turn the crank the appropriate number of positions for that first, you know, the first digit of the um, other factor and then shift the carriage over and then turn the crank the number of times for the second digit and so on. On the comptometer, you basically have to manually enter the number as many times as you want to multiply. So if you wanted to multiply, say something by 25, you'd have to enter it five times using the col columns leftmost of the keyboard. Then you'd have to enter it two times um, based off the second column. Um, so you basically you're just entering the number repeatedly on the keyboard, but just shifting your hand over as you go along, to enter it in different columns. Um, 
As far as clearing on the commentometer, it's a little bit simpler than the anthometer. You don't have to lift anything up, but you do have to push this little lever down here, and then you turn this knob until the knob locks and everything's back to zero there. Um, so then I forgot to mention the decimal indicators on the anthometer would be done by little pegs that go into these little holes here. So for example, if you had say, you know, 25.3, yeah, 253, you could put a little peg there and indicate your decimal point that way. Um, on the commentometer, I'm not sure if the camera angle is right for this, but it has these little flip tabs here where you can just flip them, stand them up or lay them down to indicate a decimal point in a particular column. Um, and the construction of this, it has a wood case, uh, but most of the mechanism inside is uh, stamped steel. Um, there are a few machine uh, brass or gun metal pieces, but most of it is stamped steel. On the inside anyway. Go over here, the next item, which is pinwheel based calculators. And representing that we have the Brunswiga Model A. Um, I'm using the Brunswiga here instead of an owner because it, well, for one thing I don't have an owner, and for another thing, this generation of Brunswiga is essentially an owner. Um, the Brunswiga, original Brunswiga factory um, in Brunswick was actually set up by Odner as a remote factory for the Odner calculator and he ended up selling it to uh, Garmin and Tallison Company and then they renamed the machine Brunswiga. But this is, this factory that made this machine was set up by Odner and it's based on Odner's patents. So um, this generation is essentially an Odner for all intents and purposes. Brunswick did make a few small enhancements. Um, they lengthened the uh, crank handle here before Odno did. Um, and we wanted two small other things, but for all intents and purposes, this is representative of the original uh, pinwheel type calculators on the market. Um, so as far as construction on this, you can see it has a mostly steel or cast iron external and internal construction. Um, it has a wood base yet, but like this plate and everything here is all um, metal. Um, this setup is similar to the arithmometer, where you have sliders here, and you can set your number on sliders like that, and then again you would turn the crank handle to add, and on this one, instead of having a switch for subtraction, you can actually turn the crank handle the opposite direction to subtract. Um, so it makes it a little, a little bit simpler than the uh, arithmometer. Uh, as far as actual use, it's very similar to the arithmometer. Again, you have the sliders for inputs, and you can move the carriage to other positions for multiplication and division. And even the decimal points are the same thing. You would have little pegs that go in these holes um, to set up your decimal indicators. Um, and of course, this is a pinwheel type design, so depending on where you set these levers determines how many pins stick out of the main drum in that column, which then determines how many positions that drives the accumulator forward. Uh, again, it has an accumulator and a counter, which actually looks like my counter is not quite cleared correctly. That one digit seems to be off, it's interesting. Um, yeah, the Comptoman, of course, does not have a counter, so the way that they instruct you to do division on the Comptoman actually ends up with the counter being in the same register as the calculation is taking place. So, as you start dividing on this side of the keyboard, and as you move across, the counter essentially is being built up in these digits as the division is happening in the lower digits. So. Um, they essentially make that one register do double duty. And for multiplication, you have to be your own counter and just count how many times you've entered the number. Um, of course, uh, clearing on the Brunswiga, uh, the thing I just showed, is these little wing nuts here. Oh, that's right, you can only clear that one when it's home. Um, so that one for the accumulator and the uh, counter. Um, yeah, so 
This particular model of the AR thermometer was introduced in 1865, and this example was made in 1873. Uh, the chromatometer was introduced in 1887. Um, this is essentially the original model, although the uh, very first few did not have these carrying inhibits. These were added a little bit later. Now this one was made in 1891, so it's still a very early example. And like I said, the pinwheel type machines, Odno Vega, Odno started selling them in uh, 1891, and they started selling basically the same machine under the Bunch Vega name in 1892. Uh, this particular example was made in 1889, as far as I can tell. And as I said, it does have a few small enhancements from the original version, but I think it's uh, still a representative of basically essentially what you were getting in 1891 as well. Uh, like I said, the most noticeable difference is the extension of the crank handle. Um, the uh, thermometer, uh, this 1865 version, was more of an enhancement over the original 1850 version um, because the original 1850 version did not have a counter at all. Um, so you basically had to be your own counter. And some of them had an, a like a little multiplier thing there where you could set uh, a number to multiply and then turn the crank and it would uh, kind of do the multiplication for you. I'm not exactly sure the, quite the details on that. Um, so I've actually seen one in use, but kind of the general idea. Um, right, so this machine was made in France, this machine was made in America, and that machine was made in Germany, um, but of course Odner designed it in Russia, and the first Odner, uh, well I guess all the original Odner branded ones were built in Russia. Um, so yeah, I think that's just a, a little light comparison of kind of, you know, how things progressed. Um, of course, not that these machines are in direct succession to each other, they're kind of two separate styles of machines for two separate use cases. Of course, the the arithmometer and the Brunsviga, or Odno or Pinwheel, or whatever you want to call them, are kind of tailored to the same type of use cases, simply because their usage is so similar. You know, you're basically entering the same way, um, they both have carriages that you can slide, and basically division and multiplication and addition and subtraction are essentially the same on either of those machines, with the exception of the Brunsviga Vega is slightly faster because you don't have that switch there. Um, so it's a little bit faster for division. There's a slightly different method for division on the arithmometer than the Brunsviga. Vega. Uh, of course, the chromatometer was mainly tailored to um, people like accountants who were adding long lists of numbers all day. And that's essentially where the chromatometer ended up being used was in back office data processing for large companies and banks and such where basically all you're doing is like, you know, balancing books is adding a long list of numbers for like transactions and stuff um, where you didn't need multiplication and division as much as say like an engineering application where the um, arithmometer and the Brunsviga would have been more helpful due to their ease of use for multiplication and division. Um, so there's essentially two separate lines of machines here, basically your kind of mathematical, you know, engineering type use machines versus your business type um, accounting style machines. Um, and the, the Burroughs essentially was kind of in the same area as the uh, compound used by banks and stuff just for adding. So um, yeah, the compound essentially evolved, kept evolving all the way up until around 1950, I think was the last revision that they released, and of course by that time, you know, computers had come in and were replacing computers um, for the back office data processing, while the other style machines that, you know, with, um, you know, saved inputs and shifting carriages, you know, evolved uh, differently, and so you essentially had two separate lines of machines where the computers, computer style machines used for back office data processing, and then other style um, rotary machines like the Arthmolero, the Bunz Vega, um, there are actually things like Marchant and uh, Monroe used for different applications. But um, so I kind of just wanted to give a little overview here. Obviously this is not super in-depth. Um, I do have more in-depth videos on each of these machines individually, um, you know, repairing them, getting them to work, and going over more in, uh, intricate details of how the mechanism works. So. If you're more interested in the in internal details of these machines, or you can check out my videos on each of those separately. But I kind of just want to give a little overview and a comparison here. Um, you know, I guess it's not too often that you know people get to see all three of these machines together at once. Kind of get a, a little look at a side by side here. But um, yeah, 
So that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.